Sexy Skulls from VH1's Rock of Love. And this is Talk of Love, the new podcast. This isn't just reality, this is real life. What's up, everybody? It's Lacey motherfucking Skulls. And this is episode 22. 22 of Talk of Love. I'm so excited. This thing is just really going forward, full steam ahead. I'm super stoked about it. And I'm really excited about my guest today. I'm, as you guys know, I'm bringing on Shatar, aka Hottie from Flavor Flay, Flavor of Love, one of my all time favorite VH1 shows, Flavor of Love. So amazing. So we're going to get into that here in a couple of minutes. I want to talk a little bit about Flavor Flav. And uh, first, though, I want to give a shout out to the Talk of Love sponsor, Liquid Death. This is such good water, and I love it because, first of all, you drink it out of a can, which is pretty freaking cool. Very delicious water. The reason it's cool that I'm drinking it out of a can is because this aluminum means less plastic in the environment, less plastic in the ocean. So if you like water, if you drink water, which I'm sure you do, then definitely pick up some Liquid Death. They're just a really cool company. I love their whole look. They're super rock and roll and they're called Liquid Death for Christ's sake. I mean, come on, that's you don't get any more cool than that. So uh, if you want to support the company and if you want to support the podcast as well, please go to their website. I'm going to put a link to it in the description on YouTube. But go to liquiddeath.com and you can order and make sure to use the promo code and you'll get 10% off if you use Talk of Love as a promo code. And make sure a couple of you have had issues with this. So just make sure not to put any spaces in between it when you enter in Talk of Love and you'll get your 10%. So I want to give a shout out to one of the Talk of Love corporate sponsors for this month, which is a podcast called Starry Network. They're very cool. I just want to take a minute to give them a shout out and tell you a tiny bit about them. Uh, if you go to YouTube and you search Starry Network, you will find them. And they're really cool. They're great podcasts because they are all about philosophy. They're all about art and music and poetry. And they really promote all of that, which I love. And of course, they're all about inclusivity, which I also love. Uh, their tagline is lighting stars in the night sky one at a time. I love that. And they specifically say that they use their channel to foster real friendships and to be a community where people are of all different types can hang out and be themselves. And they talk about literature and art galleries and as I said, poetry, and they promote other other artists' work. And they just are a really, really cool podcast. So definitely go check them out, Starry Network. So now let's get into for a minute, I wanna talk about Flavor Flav and Flavor of Love because I, I don't really talk about this very much. And of course, I had such a great time being a, a part of Rock of Love. And I loved all of the 51 Minds shows. 51 Minds is the production companies that did Surreal Life. I Love New York, Flavor of Love, you know, all of those shows, Charm School, all of them. And they those shows were so much fun and so iconic. I'm not telling you guys something that you don't already know. But for me personally, you know, I love Surreal Life and all of that, but Flavor of Love was where it's at. That is where all of this, all of the Of Love shows originated. And, you know, they had a great, great cast of characters, of course, but bringing Flavor Flav specifically on to, to fill that Bachelor role was just so, so perfect. And, you know, it makes me wonder if they had had any other personality type for that. Would that show have been as successful? And then all the shows following it were super successful, I think because of the success of that. So I feel like that show, Flavor of Love, really kind of set the tone. And, you know, Flavor Flav, he's just, he's so cool. I've always been a fan of him, not just for how entertaining he is on Flavor of Love, but also all of his work as an artist Prior to that, you know, Public Enemy, that was such an iconic band, you know, arguably one of the best hip hop bands that we've had. And Flavor Flav was such a great lyricist in that. He was such a good hype man in that. And what was so cool is they they brought up through their music a lot of really important messages and important topics and ideas and thoughts that are still relevant today. And, you know, of course, Fight the Power is an amazing song and also still relevant today and was so forward thinking for them for that time period. 
you know, that was what, 89, 90? But also like 911's a joke. It was such a funny song. But, you know, for me, being a little white girl growing up in Dallas, Texas, I had no idea about any of this stuff. You know, I didn't know, I didn't have that education at that point in time when those songs came out. And so, of course, you know, Flavor Flav is amazing because anybody who walks into a room and shouts their own name <laughs> at the top of their lungs, like, I want to be friends with that person, you know, wears a crazy Viking hat and, you know, and that clock and everything. I mean, he's just, he's such a crazy character and so much fun and, you know, likable to just about everyone, but his role in Public Enemy was just so iconic and so important and so great. So my point of saying all of this is that this artist, this man really has so much substance and such a well-rounded career and to bring him specifically on, and he already is a professional hype man. So of course he's gonna be perfect for a show like this. So I'm just, I'm really glad that they chose him. And I actually heard a rumor that he wasn't interested in even doing the show at first. I'm not sure how true that is or isn't, but that's what I read somewhere. So I'm grateful he did the show. I'm grateful the show existed. It was just, I, I don't know if we would have Rock of Love in the way that we had it, had it not been for Flavor of Love and uh, Flavor Flav specifically and the success of that show. That laid the foundation for the success of Rock of Love, Charm School, I Love New York, all of that. So anyway, that's my shout out to the show Flavor of Love and to Flavor Flav specifically. And uh, on that note, I would like to introduce my next guest who I'm very, very excited about. You guys know her from Flavor of Love season one. You know her from Flavor of Love Girls Charm School. Please welcome Shatar, AKA Hottie. Hey girl, what's up? How are you? Nice to see you. Hey, Lacey, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. I got to <laughs> tell you, I am so, so excited to be interviewing you right now because I was a huge fan of Flavor of Love and you were one of my favorites, but you're also one of the fan favorites as far as, you know, this podcast go. A lot of people have been requesting you. So thank I'm you. super stoked that I've got you here on the podcast. So thank you for thank joining. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I have to tell you, you were totally running that house. Okay. Oh. So it is a joy to talk to you. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. It's funny because when I go back and watch Flavor of Love again and see some of the old episodes and go back and rewatch Rock of Love and stuff like that and do sort of comparisons on how everyone was, I actually do see a lot of similarities on the way that you and I did things. We, you know, it's funny because my husband always compares me to Bugs Bunny. He's like, you know, you're just always like in there, like causing, you know, mayhem and chaos and stuff like that and never gets everybody all flustered. And you definitely did, you know, a little bit of like a prankster kind of thing. And you sort of did some of that as well. And so I, you know, I guess I can relate to you on that level. It's totally. Yes. I mean, we, it was a competition. Yes, it was a show and yes, it was fun, but it was a competition. So you had to be smart and think about what's coming up ahead. You know, you may not even know specifically, but just kind of lay out your game plan. And that applies to almost anything. Yeah, that's very well said. Absolutely. And you know, it's funny because you and I talked on the phone a couple of days ago just to sort of get to know each other. And uh, you said something really smart, I thought. You know, since I've been doing these interviews on this podcast, I've been talking mm -hmm. to a lot of different, um, not just the girls on the show, but some of the guys as well and getting yep. everybody's insight. And, you know, a lot of the people that were on these shows really had a fun time and really had fun with it. And other People were on the show and really felt like they were duped. They felt like they were exploited by the producers. They really had a hard time with it psychologically. And some of the girls even were like, that fucked me up. Like, I don't, I, if I could redo it, I probably would not redo it, you know? And you had some good insight into that and what the difference was. Well, I have to tell you, I, and you know, anyone who has a conversation with me, if, if I meet someone and they ask me about the show, you know, I am going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you exactly what it is. So I did find that some people thought that uh, they didn't really know what to expect. And I think that they believed that this would be, you know, their life. And, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm an entertainer. I, I, I grew up in the industry, so I understood that this was a show. So the objective was to entertain the people watching the show and right. make them want to come back the next week. It's like, it's like living a soap opera. But I do have to say this, and you know this, Lacey, those competitions, all those challenges and things, those were completely real. Like all the yes. danger, everything, it yes. was completely real. They did not give you the answer. You had to just really stay on your toes all the time. And that was true. 
Yeah, yeah, I I definitely had a great experience and I would definitely do it again. Shout out VH1. What? (laughs) Right? I know. They need to bring me to the space. Yes. Yes. I kind of want to see like a Flavor of Love Girls, Rock of Love Girls face off. Wouldn't that be amazing? Yes. Oh, that would be great. If we can set it up, that would be great. I know. I think that'd be really fun. Yeah. Well, I feel like I Love Money sort of was that, but I feel like they could do it like more specific to just the Rock of Love, Flavor of Love Girls. That would be really fun. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Yes, it would. Absolutely. Yes, it would. But yeah, <laughs> you, I, I think that you're right. And you are an inter- entertainer as am I long before the shows even were filmed. But I do feel like a lot of the girls really felt like they were there to find love. And this was sort of like a documentary type show is I, I think what their thoughts were. And so they really put themselves out there. were very raw. And of course, if that happens and you're not realizing, oh, this is just for entertainment, of course, then you're going to end up feeling exploited and maybe have a bad time with it. So, yeah. Yeah. And it's easy for people to take something personal. If they think, if they, if they take it personally, if they think that this is an actual documentary about their real actual life, then I I could understand that. Yeah. Yeah, I can understand that. For sure. Mm -hmm. But you had a great time on the show. You, you would do it again. You just said, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I had a blast. Like I knew what it was going in. And I thought ahead, you know, as an entertainer and, and Lacey, I have to tell you, I love your stuff. I love your music, Aww. that song stranger. I was watching the video. Okay. So oh, yes, thank you. You get it. Uh, yes, absolutely. And so you have to just really be strategic about where you want to take your career and see how this particular acting job can facilitate that part of your career. And that's what it was. That is very, very well said. I just interviewed Buddha last uh, two weeks ago, and he sort of was coming from a similar place as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, which actually kind of also makes sense where the villains came from. You know, I I don't know if, do you consider yourself a villain? I don't. I consider myself a person who did their best. Uh, Did I play a prank? You know, it was a competition. And, you know, people were also asking me about ask me are these different things real like there's this one scene where New York asks me about her jacket and Lacey I have to tell you the truth okay I was literally there in the shower like minding my business and I hear a knock on the door and I come out and I'm like what is going on and so they create this whole scene and I'm like is this is this something created by the producers maybe I didn't know anything about the jacket I was busy in there trying to mind my business and enjoy my shower wow That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the producers, this is one thing I keep saying consistently through this podcast. The Mm -hmm. producers of these shows were the ultimate villains. (laughs) (laughs) Right? (laughs) They had to think of every scenario before it actually happened. Yes. (laughs) I loved them, though. They were were brilliant. They were brilliant. So before we get too much into Flavor of Love, which of course I I really want to like get in there, but (laughs) I do want to, I want to learn a little bit more about you and I'm sure all the viewers want to learn a little bit more about you because one of the things that really stood out to me and I know to everybody else too, is you just had this poise and this control and you just couldn't be rattled, but you were also very articulate, well, were, are, like past tense and present tense. You're very articulate and well-spoken and just people cannot fuck with you. And I, I think that's really cool. And so that makes me wonder, where did you get this from? Like, can you tell us a little bit about your upbringing? Where did you get this um, ability to always be on, so to speak, to be such a good entertainer, but also to be controlled and, and control of your own emotions in spite of the craziness going on, to be so articulate. Uh, let's get into your childhood, how you were raised, all that good stuff. Well, thank you. And the thing is, I could give you the press answer, right? But I believe that you really make an effort to get to the heart of it. So I'm going to just tell you the truth. Um, I was raised in the industry. My godmother uh, in New England was a producer on the New England Emmys. So I grew up in the industry understanding that this is a business. This show is a business and not to take it personally. But also, because I know you're into this too, I am the daughter of a psychiatrist. So I understand different things and about how the mind works. And the main thing is we're not there to have our cages rattled. We are there to do a job and get on to the next thing and, and hopefully have some fun along the way. And I know I did. And I can tell that you did in all those scenes, too. You had them running around. More power to you. That was great. 
<laughs> well, thank you. I really appreciate Brandy you saying that. I always say Brandy M, I think, is one of the girls from my seasons that handled me the best because she just was like, you know, I would just like you, I would lay out the bait and the Mm -hmm. girls that took the bait, that was Mm -hmm. when it was just like all over for them. And, um, and Brandy M just like, wasn't, she's like, I'm not playing. You can go fuck yourself. (laughs) And it was, it was great though. And I ended up becoming friends with her because she had this like awesome attitude, but yeah, it's all about, um, the, psychology of things, as you said, you have a pretty good understanding. I never studied psychology um, at, uh, professionally or anything like that. I don't have like a PhD or master's or anything like that, but I've always been interested in it because you can use it for so many um, good things that you can use it to improve your communication with your partner and with your friends mm-hmm. and to problem solve and that sort of thing in a way that everybody benefits. But then you can also use it in more sinister ways like these TV shows where you can get people all rattled and all worked up. And sometimes for me, it almost felt too easy because I would just put some shit out there and all the girls would have to do is go like, whatever, Lacey, you're an idiot and walk away. But they never did. <laughs> yes. And using those things same- skills to try to keep it together in yourself you know survey the landscape see what it is see what the situation could turn into if you wanted it to and kind of steer it in that direction if you want and if you don't feel like being bothered then why you know so that's that's what it was to see where you want the conflict to be because really there would not be a show if everyone is sitting around singing kumbaya right that that's not why they're there so there has to be some like dramatic tension and I have to tell you, sometimes we would just sit there calmly and talk, you know, and we'd see the camera come around the corner. And we're like, okay, you know, to, yep, exactly. exactly. Showtime. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, yes. you're totally right. <laughs> I felt that way on day one from Rock of Love. I felt like all the girls yeah. were being a little bit... Uh, subdued a little bit calm like you know nice to know you get of course when tiffany came in it was a whole it brought things to a whole new level with a don't threaten me with a good time which is amazing but for me personally i that's when i started going like all right we got to really because she was only only on rock of love for a couple of uh episodes so when she Mm -hmm. left i was like oh we got to make this really fun and really big which is similar to what you did as well, which is really great. I think another big difference between the Rock of Love Girls and Flavor of Love Girls is that the Rock of Love Girls drank so much, myself included. We were so bored because everything was taken away. You didn't really drink a whole lot on the show, right? We did not. So the day we arrived there, we were happy to see people. You know, we're happy to see other people and talk. And yeah, there was a bar on set But really, they kept our pace so busy. There was competition after the other. We went to the senior center to help out or maybe we had a perfume making competition or whatever. So the thing that the the thing to achieve was actually try to get some sleep when you could because it was rare and it was a 24 hour production cycle for most of the time. So things could happen late at night or early in the morning. You just have to be ready. You know, you have to be on your toes. So I was taking my vitamins, drinking my orange juice and making sure I got as much sleep as I could. Smart. That was really, really smart. I think that was definitely worked in your favor for sure. So how how did you get involved um, in television specifically? Because mm-hmm. were, you were part of another show prior to Flavor of Love. Is that correct? Many shows. I've done, you know, different movies and, and TV shows and film festivals. Um, I, I did a just a I started off as an extra, but was picked to play a bank teller in Waste Deep, which was a lot of fun. Um, I played a poker dealer in the movie High Roller starring Michael Imperioli. But uh, Blind Date, Lacey, I auditioned and did Blind Date, and that was just another show. And then later I auditioned for this one, which turned out to be Flavor of Love. But people were asking, I saw in the comments today on Instagram, was Blind Date a coincidence or did it really happen? I have to tell you, that was not part of production. (laughs) That was an actual... So TV cool. show that was airing while we were in the house filming and it happened to come on. So that was not pre-planned How at all. How funny. Oh my God, that's hilarious. And that's so cool that you did this dating show because I, I was talking to 12 Pack a few mm-hmm. weeks ago and he did a, a dating show as well. And then he yeah. told me that from there, that's where the producers found him and invited him to do these other shows for VH1. Mm-hmm. Is that sort of what got you into Flavor of Love was doing the dating show? Not at all. That's exactly what I'm saying. It was oh, exactly I see. It was opposite. not related at all. Oh, I got you. Sorry, I totally misunderstood. Totally random. Okay. It was totally random. That was fate, whatever you want to call it. We were literally there in the middle of production, 
and the blind date episode came on Flav's television. Got you. And he I saw see. it. Yes. So that was not planned at all. Um, but for me as an actor, it was just one gig and then another gig and then another gig. And then, but that that's what happened. So how do totally you random? How do you meet the casting directors for Flavor of Love? Mm hmm. Uh, I received uh, an invitation for an audition and I actually took time because you know you have to do this took time to research the production company research the things that they do in advance and I saw that they cast these over the top colorful characters so when I went into the audition I, I still have a photo from this audition I, I went into the audition in like this pink corduroy mini jacket with the nice. whole cleavage and the fur you know why the, the chain stuff and then it didn't matter what they asked me I answered with the most dramatic answer uh that I could and because I knew that over the top is what was going to be needed yep. for their style of production and then later I got the call to come back to production and and, uh, you know, you never know what it's going to be. Uh, you know, you never know what it's going to be. And it turned out that it was this show and it was like the, the little show that could and it turned into something great and the whole franchise. I'm really happy for the network and happy for the shows. That's so cool. And you're totally right. You were very, very smart. I did the same thing on my audition. I knew it yes, was going to be tell like us, tell us. dating a rock star sort of thing. And mm -hmm. we didn't know that it was Brett Michaels at the time, but I was right. able to, to pry it out of the producer's mouths mm -hmm. before I actually Ow. went on the set. Yeah. What'd you do? Yeah, so I remember going in there to the audition and just giving the most outlandish, just like exactly what you just said, the most outlandish <laughs> answer. I don't even remember what I said. I just remember none of it was true. <laughs> and they're like, what's the wildest thing you've ever done? And I'm like, I had sex hanging from a helicopter above the Grand Canyon. Like just ridiculous, ridiculous stuff. They're like, oh my God, you did? <laughs> I'm like, sure. <laughs> now I did. So yeah, just exactly what you just said, just being as outrageous as, as possible. And it just, it totally, totally worked. So uh, you yes. didn't know it was Flavor Flav until you went on to the show. Is that correct? I did not. Oh my God, that is crazy. So you knew who Flavor Flav was though, right? Oh, absolutely. You know, he's a great musician and it turns out he's actually a classical pianist. Yes. And at the episode that his mom uh, was on, you know, I had a chance to talk with her and then later she met my mom and she was saying, that when they were growing up, she actually wanted Flav to become a minister because he comes from a family wow. of ministers. He and would so actually mom, be good at that. Yes. <laughs> what do you say? He would actually be good at that because he's, he's such a hype nice. man. Yes. And my mom was saying, well, actually, he has his ministry of music and that's how he's spreading the message. And he really is. So. There you go. Yep. I like that. Exactly. And you're a musician yeah. too, right? Yes, my, I'm just trying to be like you. Okay, that video. No, we, no. We, should, we, should, we should collaborate on something. We that totally was a lot should. Of fun. I would love we it. Should, I just should, that would be great. I think we're living in the same city as well. I just found out we're both in Las yes. Vegas. Yep, that is right. Oh, that well, is, we so we'll talk. We'll, we'll, we'll uh, exchange notes and and see about production and stuff. Oh, girl, we, we got you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all for it. Well, tell me yes. about, because you're a beautiful singer. We've all heard you sing. You have an amazing, amazing voice. I think that you surprised the fuck out of everyone with that, by the way, which is pretty rad. So Thanks. it's awesome when like you're about to do something and everyone's expecting you to fuck it up. And like, you know, everyone's expecting you to fuck it up and you just go out there and you kick ass and they're like, oh shit. <laughs> exactly. That. See, trying to be like you with that because all of the production and the, the skill and stuff, you, you bring it. Oh. And you have to bring it when you're doing these shows. You cannot just kind of half step, dip your toe, and you have to bring it. And you do. And oh. I appreciate that about you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate yep. you saying that. And likewise. <laughs> yeah. I, thank you. I always tell people you got to take everything that's in you and mm -hmm. just put it on level 10 all the mm -hmm. time. Just the most mm -hmm. extreme versions of yourself. And yes. that's that's how it all works, you know? So it, as you know. It as you, does. Yeah. You are right. And for, for your fans who are watching, I've seen all of the comments, you know, it's so active on Instagram and they're asking things and they love your show and just congratulations on the success too. Oh. Um, and, and I want to encourage everyone who's watching to listen, pay attention to what she just said. You have to take what you've got and take it to a 10. Like really make it work for you because- Someone may encourage you, but there may be nobody to encourage you. And even if no one does encourage you, you still do it because you, why, why should you just sit on the sidelines? You deserve the right to go out there and get yours. And that is exactly what I am encouraging right now. 
I love that. You should be a, motiv- a motivational speaker, Shatara. You totally, you're so <laughs> positive you. and you totally, you totally get it. I, I, that was very well said. I feel well, like uh, one thing that I always preach to people that is sort of like how I've gotten through with everything that I've ever tried to pursue in life, it's all about yep. conviction, really. And so yep. either you have the confidence to do something and then therefore the conviction and the passion comes naturally or mm-hmm. if you don't have that confidence yet, but it is something, whatever the, it is that you're going for, it's all about conviction. You know, it's the fake it till you make it. It's just go full throttle, go forward, be loud, mm-hmm. be specific. And if you have that conviction, whether it's in entertainment or just going after something that you want, if you bring the conviction, mm-hmm. people will believe you and people will trust you. Yep, absolutely. And the thing is, don't try to be somebody else. You be you. And bring it. You just, you know, understand that they there is no mold to break. You just cr- create it and just go. I love that. So that actually brings me to um, one of the fan oh, questions okay. from Instagram. Yeah. And I think that you're sort of already answering this, but maybe you can give us a more specific answer. Uh, so on Instagram, one of the fans, Mal Skills from Instagram, I need to know is, were you... Were you Shatar? Were you for real or were you a character? Because I feel like a little bit of both. I feel like you naturally are such a unique individual and you already have that confidence and and you you are so uniquely you. You don't pretend to be anybody else. You are Shatar. And but at the same time, as you said earlier, you were aware that we are being filmed. We're creating this TV show. It's gotta be fun. So would you say you were more yourself or were you more a character or a little bit of a blend of both on Flavor of Love and Charm School? A, a lot of it, oh, definitely Charms. A lot of it was a uh, character. You are handed this situation and you have to see how to navigate it successfully um, to either win the competition or have it be in some, something that's in line with your professional goals. So um, I do consider myself uh, to be a person who encourages others. So, so, so that part is true in my real life. Um, and for the show, though, there were many things. Okay, I won't give you the press answer. Let me just tell you like what it is. Okay. So a lot of people ask me about uh, were the competitions real? Yes, the competitions were real. And um, some of the things about the chicken, should I mention that yes, part? Yes, I, okay, I was okay. going to get into the chicken. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Because they asked me, is that real? So the truth is, I was truly raised vegetarian. I have never made chicken ever in my life. I had never touched <sighs> a raw chicken ever. Um, wow, that's so, interesting. And, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so people ask, does it reflect directly on intellect? No. I mean, I do have a, a college degree. I have graduated from an Ivy League school and I put myself through grad school and all of these things. But when it comes to making chicken, I had no idea. So the truth <laughs> is, we have awesome. this competition <laughs> to make this recipe according to uh, Flav's mom's family <laughs> recipe. And um, I knew that wasn't the, that was one that I was not going to win. And I, I'm very competitive, but I knew, I mean, you know how. But the other thing is, I turned around and all I saw on those stoves were pans full of like, hot grease and people don't understand that the danger is real so if anyone who knows who al green is he's um yeah performer who you know so i was like there is not going to be any al green on on this show today Uh, uh, i'm not going anywhere near that stove with all that grease Uh, how else can i make this chicken i saw the micro and so at that point i said okay let me have fun with it so i found some marshmallows and some jelly and some mushrooms and started packing it on and some chow mein noodles and put those on and then found the cucumbers and, you know, and just had fun with it in the <laughs> microwave. Never really cooked. So I found a button on the microwave that said chicken. <laughs> it makes that sense button. to me. <laughs> yes, exactly. And I was glad that it was there. So, so that is the true story behind the chicken episode. I love that. And I didn't realize that you were raised vegetarian. Yep, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> I love all it. Of it. Yes. Well, I can relate to you because I am the worst cook in the entire world as well. <laughs> and it's one of those situations if I try to cook, it's like everybody dismantled the smoke alarms. They're going to go oh. off. <laughs> I am yeah. ridiculous with that. So yes, I can and relate. it's okay. It is totally okay. Uh-huh. I've, I've been there. I know what it is. I mean, I took, so I got married seven years ago. Congratulations. I started learning stuff. Thank you. Some recipes from my husband's family because, I mean, now I've got a family. So, you know, I learned 
something. So I do know how to cook now, but when the smoke alarms, can I tell you, I completely understand <laughs> running through with the magazines or the books, you know, <laughs> yeah. yes, I get it. I get it. That's amazing. So that will bring us into something else that I want I want to bring up later on having to do with cooking and what you're doing now. So we will get into that in a second. But um, first, I also want to ask you, oh, so did you ever develop feelings for Flav or did you look at it more as just like a business partnership kind of thing? Totally a business uh, partnership. Now, as far as feelings, I, I, I appreciate people, you know, in general, I, I lead with love. That's my motto. I like that. Um, so I was very, thank you. You know, I see that you, you know, you do the same in your podcast, making sure that people feel comfortable and they get their truth out. So I'm, yeah. I'm glad to see that. And I did tell him while we were on set, yeah, I'm here for business, you know, and, and that's really what it is. But I was happy to see his success in having this show and, and being part of this new franchise. He was so great. He was absolutely brilliant and the perfect person to have chosen for this type of show. I mean, he's naturally, yeah. he is a hype man. So it was just, yes. it was perfect. But I do, feel, I feel like he was able to relate to a lot of different personality types, that sort of mm -hmm. thing. So spe yeah. <laughs> speaking of personality types, what was it for? What was it like for you being on the show with all these girls, with all their different personality types? Mm -hmm. what, did you have... Um, did you have a hard time navigating that? And also more specifically, I know New York is a very strong female and I can imagine that would be, because you're a strong female going head to head with her, I would imagine mm -hmm. it would, would be tough at times. So how did you navigate through all of this? And what were your thoughts on everybody? What were your thoughts on New York? Did you have mm -hmm. legitimate friendships with girls? Let's get into mm -hmm. that a little bit. Well, here we go. So- Legitimate friendships, yes, I would consider myself friends with some of the girls, and some of them I'm still in communication with today. Nice. Now, as far as uh, New York and her doing her shows, I have to say that I feel that as far as uh, people starring for their show, because they did, you know, she did uh, end up doing a show, that I think that it was important for them to have uh, someone who uh, they could influence to uh, do or say or uh, contribute to whatever they had in mind. And I do feel that I am definitely the stronger of the sexes. And so that is why they picked New York to do her own shows. So, you know, anyone who's having professional success, I'm totally happy with that. But I do believe that um, I am definitely the stronger of the sexes. Okay. Definitely. I like that. I like that. That's a good answer. Absolutely. Okay, this is a good one. Um, mm -hmm. On Instagram, Kayla asks, does watching the show and how they portrayed you make you laugh or does it make you mad? The bicycle bell every time you blinked killed me. I think that killed everybody. That was hilarious. Because the thing is, normally in these types of shows, I, I've heard this sort of sound effect done on like the blinking in, with other people on other shows. And it usually... Mm -hmm it usually portrays the idea that like lights are on in no one's home, like you're a, you know, a dumb blonde or whatever. But you are very educated, obviously educated. You come across as an educated woman. You come across as articulate. So how, you're welcome. So how did you feel when you watched it back? Did you, did you laugh or were you like, those motherfuckers? <laughs> so straight talk, because my whole family was, was there when the show premiered. We all gathered around to see whatever they created with this footage that we... Uh, participated in and as soon as I saw that Lacey I cracked up I said the editors had a great time just like they had with you when they added all those sound effects oh god you they made me like demonic yes, yes. yes. The editors, so, yeah. they had a blast and so that is I mean that is what it is so I laugh along with it more power to the editors I, was I love very it creative. you have to yes. absolutely so I love yes. that that's really great um mm -hmm. so let's see oh so your elimination, Flav was a little bit hard on you. Let's talk about that. How did you feel about that? Um, how did you feel about the way you exited the show? Did you wish that things were different? Let's get into that a little bit. Um, well, I know that it's important to maintain poise. So I believe that he, as a, an entertainer, the one who is like the lead of, of this show, was genuinely surprised to see all of the things going on. So I survived that chicken episode and I was still there. So I guess, blind, you know, a blind date came on. I was like, what? I was very happy to participate for the time that I was there. And when it was time to go home, that was fine. Because if you notice a lot of the, the, next, uh, the next episodes, um, 
it was a, a different type of uh, scene, whereas the ones that we were in, you know, competitions and going to the senior centers and, and stuff. So that part was fun. Was I happy to go home? I was happy to get some rest, let me tell you. Um, but did I have a lot of fun while I was there? Yes. Yes, I did. That's awesome. Well, I will tell you, I got super hardcore scolded by Sharon Osborne on one of the yeah. episodes of oh, Charm yeah. School that I was on. And mm-hmm. it's like, for the most part, I feel like Sharon liked me. I definitely liked her a lot. I thought she was a really, really cool woman. I've always looked up to her and been a fan of her mm-hmm. and her whole family. But like getting totally chastised on national television by somebody that you totally idolize it is definitely uncomfortable. And the thing that sucks is, normally in a scenario like that, I mean, anybody could guess I don't shut the fuck up. So I would want to either like um, argue with them or if not argue, go like, hey, your your perspective is wrong. Here's a different perspective. Would you consider that perspective? Or, or is some sort of like going back and forth. But when it's something like this with me, with Sharon or you with Flav, you really, you you can't talk back. And, and if you even try, you're just going to dig yourself in deeper. So you just mm-hmm. w- sort of have to just like sit there and take it and like, well, there goes my ego. That was nice. <laughs> <laughs> it was nice having yes. one. It's not here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and then for, for uh, so that was the elimination for Flavor of Love, but that elimination on Charm School. Now that was a completely different thing. What happened That was, was fucked up. You got fucked on that one. Well, yeah, let's get into Charm School. And that's what I was saying. That it, after this, I, I still demand a rematch. I had nothing to do with whatever the picture was found, wherever it was found, and, and you saw it was revealed later. But yes, a rematch, a rematch. Yeah. I, I was there to win that show. I planned oh, to really? win. Trying, and then I was sent home, and I was like, what? And it was totally unjustified. So yes, a rematch, oh, rematch. God. Well, mm-hmm. So let's, let's get into the beginning of Charm School. Okay. So obviously, okay. Monique was the headmistress. Um, did you know that she was going to be the host of the show going into it? Or was that similar with you with Flav, where you were just like, oh, it's Monique as soon as you showed up? Or did you know ahead of time? You know what? I, I don't recall. Now, now that I'm thinking about this, it is possible that I, I may have known beforehand or... Or not, I, I, that was a while ago, but when I did arrive on set, I was happy to see her because, you know, she's from Maryland and I grew up some time in Maryland. And so that part was good. I was genuinely happy to see her. And, you know, she's had a really great career and continues to do things. And for anyone to attain those levels of career success with the nominations and, you know, awards and things and all of the series and, and shows, it's really, really great. Nice. That's awesome. So did you have more fun on Charm School or did you have more fun on Flavor of Love? (laughs) Flavor of Love, we didn't really know what to expect. By Charm School, it was sort of like dancing around and seeing, okay, what's it going to So you can relate. Yes. You know. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. So so you really, you were going to win this thing. Like your mindset was you're in it to win it. Mm Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Wow. That's really disappointing. So, So let's set up... Basically, you got framed. So just in case somebody hasn't seen that mm-hmm. those episodes or that show specifically, let's walk everybody through it. So, cause, so basically, you got framed. And the reason is because you had played a prank on some of the girls and took some of their wardrobe and that sort of thing. And then Laylene's pictures of her mother ended up missing. Is that correct? So I'll tell you what actually happened. Okay. I was talking with the producer who is not with us anymore you know um and she was so i was actually instructed to film a scene uh with the producer and so i followed her instructions she was a a great producer um and i followed the instructions and put things where they had to go um and uh so so it was a prank basically it was a prank that happened during the show and uh, and i was happy to participate to keep the the production uh, through line going yeah but later on two of the girls found one of the girls pictures of her uh, mom and they hid it under my bed and i had no idea that it was there mm. uh, and or who put it there until i literally was watching the show at home man oh, yep. i bet you were like screaming at the tv <laughs> Yes, oh you know it. God. Absolutely. Yes. Oh, wow. And so mm-hmm. how how far from the end did you get sent home? I can't remember. Mm, there were a few people left after okay. I went home. Yeah, but I felt like I should have been there to the end. I was in it to win it. Wow, how disappointing. So did you have a plan for the money if had you won? 
Oh, there are all kinds of things you could do. I, but really, I wanted to buy some things for my mom. Aww. And we have some philanthropic things that we like to do. So, you know, shop a little, buy a couple of nice things, and then get something for my mom. That, those are the main things. I love that. That's really sweet. I, I love it. Oh, thank you. So did you get invited to do any of the, uh, the I Love Money shows? Or was that even something that was talked about? Or were you just good with the two shows that you did and you were ready to move on to other things? Both. Um, I did get invited, yes, but I was happy with the two shows that I'd done. And so that was, you know, I knew that I had taken these steps for my career that I needed. Uh, I had a great time working on both shows, but I didn't need to do a third show in order to achieve this. You know, I had all of these things. I had the experience with these two. They were two very varied shows. And uh, yeah, so I, I, I'm glad they were able to continue with the franchise to I Love Money and the other shows. But yes, I, I was good with that one. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah I think you would have been yeah. really great on I Love Money. I think you would just, you know, it's every time you do one of these shows, you just, mm-hmm. I feel like you get better and better and better. And you have that way of the very kind of calculated way of thinking anyway. <laughs> so like, yeah, you would have been amazing on that for sure. Thank you. And you're right. As you do these shows, you do get better because they're continually throwing these, different types of competitions at you. And so you are developing these skills as you go. It's a lot about a survival. It's a lot about um, thriving. It's a lot about uh, being smart. And yes, you do. You learn these skills as you go with each show. And you are correct. After three, four, five, six shows, you people do learn a lot. Absolutely. And I think also mm-hmm. when you get to watch it back, you're like, oh, yeah. I should have done this instead of that. Or, ooh, the way I did that, I should have done that more. You know, did you find that was your experience as well? When I watch this show, I could barely believe some of the things that happened. Like when I, I'm so again, I'm in the shower minding my business. I hear the knock on the door. I come out to talk to people. I think I may even help, still had my robe and my towel. And they're asking me something about a jacket. And uh, so Lacey, I told them the truth. I didn't know anything about that jacket. And if I had done something with the jacket, I would have just told them exactly what it is, what I'd done with it, because I'm up front. I tell the truth about what it is. Um, And then that's that's when the whole um, Beyonce thing. And I heard one of the fans ask, did people actually say that to me? And yes, they actually said that to me. And so that was a fun, a whole, you know, the whole scene was fun. Um, But yes, you have to just, be smart and aware that almost anything can happen during the day and you have to be ready. Yes, absolutely. Well, I get the Beyonce <laughs> thing. You've got that big, beautiful smile and big, beautiful oh, hair. So you. I get the the Beyonce comparison. Absolutely. Well, our families are from the same part of the country. So anything is possible. There you go. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So speaking of all the, the, the whole chicken episode, we're going back to <laughs> Flavor of Love now. That has... <laughs> migrated into your life in a really unique way and you have created a new project and let's talk about that that was based off of the whole chicken incident so let's get into that mm-hmm. so yes the truth is again I got married so I'm learning recipes for my husband's family and it turned out that no matter what we produce because um his name is Maxi D. Collier he's actually the director and producer of um, the documentary Paper Chasers, which is starring like Ludacris and Fat Joe and Siobhan Dean and a bunch of people. So together awesome. we create documentaries and, you know, TV channels and these tech products. But it did not matter how many tech products or e-learning courses we made. People would always ask, no, yeah, yeah, that's fine. But what about that chicken? So we realized, <laughs> you know, we created this thing, Poultry Princess. And let's Poultry see, I have Princess. The cookbook right here, Poultry Princess, um, where I... Uh, I'm sharing the actual recipes that I'm learning from my husband's family. That is so a gorgeous right here, photo of you, by the way. The, you look beautiful. You That's a gorgeous photo of you. Oh, thank you. I it's love- actually from one of the scenes when we're cooking in the kitchen. So thank you very much. Um, and Lacey, I'm going to send you a copy because you can actually do it. We do step-by-step instructions. So I promise you, you should be able to make some kind of recipe in here. We have, we actually have some vegan recipes in there we've got cauliflower mash and things to go on the side with the dishes but yes um and so now whenever anyone asks me about the chicken I just tell them the truth no I did not know how to cook before (laughs) yes I know how to cook now and there are step-by-step instructions and I can share these with you and so also with the whole SEO when people look up potty chicken now poultry princess also comes up and they can get the recipes for themselves I love that. That is so brilliant. What a great way to turn this 
this situation on a reality show that was hilarious, but you also were given quite a bit of shit for, and you totally like made it work for you and, and were able to capitalize on it. And I think that's amazing. I love that. Thank it's such a you. Smart I hope that it's a story of resilience for people. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. I love that. And um, so let's talk more about your post uh VH1 experience. So you said you got married seven years ago. What does your husband think about all of this? Oh, he, I mean, he's, he, he's been in the industry 25 years. He started at BET. So he totally knows what it is. He was a stage manager and saw the people come through. So the main thing is uh, um, there was someone uh, named Vaughn Mason who came through. He's a, a, he was a music producer. He, he just recently passed. But when my, my husband was a new employee at BET, he had a chance to talk with him and he asked him about the industry. And basically the guy was saying, do you want to be the boss or do you want to work for the boss? And he said he wants to be the boss. So nice. he and I are on the same page with that. So he feels great about this because we are having the opportunity to share these shows just like you do with the, with your show and you control everything that's going on with it. So you can have the message that you want to portray with the show. And that is so important. You guys very Make important. Sure you create your own. Yeah. Yeah. To have that yeah. creative control. Cause anybody can edit anything any way they want to. Yep. So, yeah. you know, you really, you can put out any kind of performance that you want. And mm -hmm. next thing you know, you've got demonic pitch shifter on your voice and, <laughs> and ching ching every time that you <laughs> blink your eyelashes. Yes. So it's yes. all out the window. But also mm -hmm. the other thing too is, uh, and I don't really talk about this that much cause I'm not, I'm, I'm like, I'm kind Please of talk about it. Okay, talk so I'm going to talk you about it now. Know. Yes, I'm mm -hmm. I'm a little sore about this. I'm I'm not. I've made peace with it. I'm not that sore, but kind of a little bit sore about this. Um, and this also stems back from when I was doing, um, you know, rock bands and stuff like that. How much mm -hmm. record labels or in, in our case, production companies really take advantage of the artist slash talent uh, when it comes to finances? Because these shows, Flavor of Love, Rock of Love were fucking huge. And among the highest rated shows in VH1 history, they were not only shown in the United States for years and years and years, but also internationally in all kinds of other countries and DVDs and all kinds of stuff. And, you know, us girls really made those shows. I mean, of course, Flavor Flav is amazing. Of course, Brett Michaels is amazing. Of course, the producers did really great stuff too. But, you know, they paid all the girls flat fees. There was no like residuals. And, and you know about that, given the fact that you're in the industry. And it's like, there's so much money to be made. And a lot of these girls that were really like the dominant force personality wise just really got like a just change, you know, a minimal amount of payment for these shows. And that's why I am so happy to see you doing your show. When I saw it there, I was clicking on every ad, click, 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 click. Make sure you get all that. Make sure that all that. So that comes to you. And also for people like Bethany, I'm so happy for her. Now, Jessica Alba, she was not on a reality show that like this traditionally, but with her, with her honest company, she also did very well for herself and continues to be smart. I'm seeing the things that uh, Reese Witherspoon is doing in the industry. Yes. Of course, Oprah has been doing this for years. So it's so important, yes, to be able to have not only creative control, but financial control of what is going out because you can also have financial control about what is coming in and determine where that then goes. Do you want to? Uh, so whenever I'm producing something, I always make sure my talent is paid. And I, I've been an advocate uh, of that from the beginning, because I remember what it was like in 2000, I was on a tour, a national tour with the Kennedy Center, and we were paid well. It was a union gig, and I'm so grateful uh, to have participated with that. We, I was reading the backstage, you know, backstage, mm -hmm. You know, I was reading the backstage and I saw that that year, the average salary for people in theater for the entire year, Lacey, was $6,183 for the whole year. Oh, wow. And of course, I really felt for everyone. And I said, okay, I'm doing theater now, but I have to go to Hollywood and have a way to incorporate residuals into my game plan instead of just yes. doing one show. And then that's it. You're just paying for that show you uh, can open the door for residuals for yourself. And so that's important just to be smart, be smart people. Yeah. Don't let anybody take advantage of you. Be smart about yeah. your finances and your career. Signing bad contracts. That's always where they get you. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
<laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Yep. And you, you can negotiate your contracts too. You don't have to take the first contract they give you. You can renegotiate to terms that actually work for you, for exactly. the fans that are watching. Very, mm-hmm. very well, very well said. Very well said. So do you get recognized a lot? Outside oh, of yeah. the show? You know, yeah. you get recognized. Yes, yes. Because the show is a huge success and people are watching and it's, it's airing right now on Hulu and they play the yeah. reruns and also during sweeps. Often they play the shows. So there's a new audience for it every year. So we have our original audience and then the new folks. So all, the only thing we can do is just, I think, continue to to live our best lives and to inspire um, other folks. So for the, the people who are alums of the show, who are who maybe having a hard time, I want you to just, you know, keep your heads up and still remember that you went through stuff already in the past so you can get through whatever's going on right now and that one day you're going to look back and today will just be a memory. And hopefully it's something better if it's coming tomorrow. Love that. I love that. Oh, you know, thank you. Brandy C., who I interviewed last week from yep. Rock of Love, she said mm-hmm. something very smart. Uh, actually, she and I were just uh, texting each other back and forth after yep. her interview. Mm-hmm. And she mm-hmm. said something really smart, which I want to bring up. She said mm-hmm. that, uh, a good observation, I should say. It seems like the the younger, newer fans to mm-hmm. Rock of Love, Flavor of Love, are a lot yep. nicer than the original <laughs> Uh, fans of these shows and I was like yeah I feel like I I got <laughs> fucked with pretty hard and I understand I totally get it because I did not make it easy on myself or anybody else because I obviously played that villain character so mm-hmm. I got I got a lot of people that were either like oh my god Lacey you're such a badass or mm-hmm. I got people like oh my god Lacey you're a horrible and so uh, but they were like the ones that were haters they were like very creatively mean I will just say mm-hmm. <laughs> that but now I feel like I don't really get that level of hate anymore and Brandy C was saying the same thing. And I know there's there's new people watching the shows that are just in the younger generations. I'm like, I wonder why that is. Did you, do you feel like that's true? I'll tell you my, this is my theory from back then. So originally the, there were 20 women cast, I believe, mm-hmm. and it's a competition. So once the social media started, it's pretty much 19 to one for every single individual. So you have one individual and then 19 other teammates or uh, people who are team so-and-so who will try to um, lift up their fave or whoever it is and then not lift up the other one. So it's 19 to one for every single person that's on the show. So I can see how it would seem like there was a lot and there was a lot. Like it's, it's, you have to be very strong to be, in this industry, that is true. So yes, yes that's my theory. It's okay. mathematics. That makes sense. That makes sense. I get that. So we talked about Poultry Princess. What other, let's talk about all your other projects. You've got a lot of really cool stuff going on. Thank you. Oh yeah. So this is my, this is, we have started a television channel called the Documentary and Reality TV Channel. You can get it on Roku. You can get it on Amazon Fire TV. We have documentaries and reality-based content. That's so, you can so go to, cool. Thank you. You can go to docsandreality.tv and go there and just watch. And I make sure to keep it completely free for everybody. You go there, you can sign up. It's totally free for you to watch and just enjoy the content. How exciting. That's awesome. <laughs> thank you. I, I tell love everybody, that. keep your stimulus check to spend on what you want. You know what I mean? And love just come it. and watch the shows. That's so mm-hmm. cool. I love that. Thank you. And I hear some dogs in the background, so we got to talk about your dogs because yeah. you're, you're a dog person like I am and you have rescue yeah. dogs as well. So tell everybody yeah. about your dogs because I, I just love them. I've seen their pictures yeah. on Instagram. They're adorable. Thank you. So for those who remember Cash, you know, Cash, he's not with us anymore, the Pekingese, mm. but we do still have his companions, Kaching. She is here and she's doing well. She's a poodle terrier mix. Aww. And then also Royal Highness. She is doing well. She's the one with the pointed ear. She's a corgi like Toto. Oh. And we're also uh, fostering a husky. Oh. First time with a big dog. And so, Lacey, you have these big dogs. How do you do it with the Great Danes? Oh, God, I love them. Yes, three Great Danes and okay. then one little guy as well. And I was telling yep. you earlier, 
I have a thing about S names for some reason. That's mm-hmm. always been my thing. I've had dogs that are no longer with me include, a, I actually had a Husky as well named Sadie. Oh, yep. I had a Hungarian Vichel oh. named Susie. I had wow. a Great Dane named Story. I had a Great Dane named Sahara. And all of those wow. dogs live long lives, are no longer with me. And mm-hmm. uh, currently I have the Great Dane Storm. I have a Great Dane yep. Scarlet. I have a Great Dane Sephora. Ooh. And uh, and then I got a little guy who's like he came from the SPCA. He's like a King Charles Cavalier mix, and okay. um and his name is Cooper, and we he's a rescue, uh, so <laughs> he rules. He's twenty five okay. pounds. He rules the roost. <laughs> uh, yeah, the small ones they do. It's so true. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, um, well, Shatar, it was so great talking to you. And I feel like we could just go for hours and hours. And I really appreciate you sitting down with me and spilling some tea about the shows and um, letting us know how you've been. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on here, Lacey. Looking forward to talking about the collab and keep going with this show. I love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Thank you. You're amazing. Yes. Love you, Shatar. You're awesome. Yeah. I'll talk to you again very soon. Okay, looking forward to it. Have a great afternoon. Bye, girl. Have a good one. Okay, bye. Oh, that was so much fun, you guys. I loved that. I love her. Isn't she great? I just am blown away by not only her, but a lot of these uh, contestants from the shows that I have brought on to be guests on this podcast. I've really been blown away at how well-rounded these people are, how how much they've achieved in their lives and just what cool, great people. You know, you watch you watch a lot of these characters on the shows and they just kind of seem one-dimensional, you know, or some of them seem dumb or you just don't really think of them as like having a life outside of the show or even existing outside of the show. I know that sounds weird, but, you know, when you find out, well, like not only, yes, they do still continue to exist outside of the show, but they also have these like great careers and, and spouses and some of them have kids. And it's just really cool to see who these people were before the shows, how they navigated being on the shows and what their life became afterwards. And I always love a good success story. So it makes me happy people like Shatar who who go on and accomplish really great things. And Shatar's not even done yet too. She's going to keep going and keep killing it. So I love that. So speaking of characters from the shows, I am going to tell you guys, I'm super excited for next week's guest for Talk of Love. I'm, I've been talking to her for weeks now and we've just been having a hard time getting our schedules to coincide, but I'm finally bringing on Christy Joe from Rock of Love season two and from the Rock of Love Girls Charm School. She will be on Talk of Love next Monday. So be sure to tune in. I'm really, really excited. I love Christy Joe. She's such a great person. She's so much fun and she's so sweet, but she's also just such a character as well. So I cannot wait to bring her on and interview her. I know you guys are going to love that too. So if you like the podcast, please, please, please show your support. I know you guys are digging it. So come and let me know how much you appreciate it by going to my website and becoming a contributor. If you go to the website, www.talkoflove.com, dot net slash contribute, then you can pick a tier group that works for you and you can show me how much you appreciate me and the podcast by being supportive. And also you can sign up for really cool and fun rewards. For instance, every week to my contributors, I send the Rock of Love reaction video that I do where you get to watch me watch along and comment to all of the Rock of Love shows. We are halfway done through Rock of Love season one. And so I'm going to be doing Charm School next. I'll be doing all of the Rock of Love seasons. I'll be doing the Flavor of Love seasons. I'm going to be doing all of them. So sign up for that, or you can sign up to do a Skype chat with me. I mean, there's so much cool stuff on there. So come be a contributor. It's It's been a lot of fun. And on that note, I actually want to give a, a quick shout out to some of the talk, to, sorry, the top <laughs> contributors for Talk of Love. Uh, my brain and my mouth don't always connect. Um, so as I said, Starry Network, thank you so much for becoming a corporate sponsor. And Mike Paquette, you know, I love you so much. You've been so supportive and I really, really appreciate you, Mike. Evilness, you're amazing. Crystal, Zena, I love you, girl. You're so supportive. Jennifer Grogan. And let's see, we've got Mary Beth Loden. We have Annette. We have Brooke McDonald and her amazing two doggies. And Caitlin, we've got Camille and uh, we've got Corey Cooper, we've got Rob Yager, Alex. You guys are amazing. The list goes on and on, but those are my top supporters and contributors who literally make it so that this podcast happens every week. So thank you guys so, so much. You're amazing. 
Also, if you like the podcast, be sure to subscribe on YouTube and click that thumbs up and um, make sure also to get your liquid death water. And I will put the link in the description of YouTube down below. So thank you guys so much. I really appreciate you guys. And I'll see you next week with uh, Christy Joe. So have a great week, everybody. And don't threaten me with a good time. Bye, guys.